The People's Democratic Party, PDP, will need to put its house in order as the 2023 general elections draw near. Since the emergence of Atiku Abubakar as its standard bearer and the choice of Delta State Governor Ifani Okowa as his running mate, some party members feel River State Governor Nye Samwike should have been picked ahead of his Delta State counterpart. Joining us on the show this morning as we discuss the internal issues within the party is Kola Ologwadeo, former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Kola. Thank you very much, Tudun. Good, mo good morning. Good morning, uh, Rufai. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Dr. Oh, Abati, it's been a while. We are still on the screen. Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to see you back on the screen, too, and to see you back in action. <laughs> but let me ask you, what's your take on the uh, you current developments in the PDP, uh, particularly with, the, with regard to the choice of a running mate uh, by uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar and the fallouts? Uh, from that. We wicked defect. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Abati. Thank you very much, Dr. Abati. First and foremost, let me begin by saying that the party is encountering turbulence as we speak presently. However, the managers, drivers, and captains of the party have, on, have an understanding of the depth moves they will take in order to take us out of the current turbulence. I quite accept that there was a decision to be taken, whether taken rightly or taken wrongly, a decision had been taken. Like Governor Tom said on another platform last night, what is left is the management of the decision that had been taken. The three vice presidential nominees Presented to, the, presented to the candidates are eminently qualified to occupy the office of Mr. Vice President. However, I normally tell people that in our own political party, the People's Democratic Party, that we always encounter the challenge of choice when it comes to decision making. Because the people that have been lined up to be decided upon will be eminently qualified. They are resourceful persons. Governor Wike is known as Mr. Project. In terms of infrastructural development, he has done well. He has been chairman. He has been chief of staff. He has been minister. He has been governor going to eight years. He's eminently qualified. Governor Okowa is also been is the local government. He's been secretary to the state government. He's been, um, he's been a, a state commissioner. He's been, he's been a senator as the chairman committee on health in the Senate. He demonstrated capacity. You can see the number of the federal medical centers that were built under the administration. If you go to Governor Udom, he's a modern developer who understands wealth creation. So when you have such men before you to be decided upon, you must definitely be confronted by the challenge of choice. But having said this, a decision had been made, and party's decision, expectedly, are supreme. However, we cannot say those who have some forms of complaints, those who have issues with the way the decision is being managed after being taken, should not complain. And like I said earlier on, we are going through the turbulence of managing a decision that had been taken. However, I want to assure our party members from my own side, and as a follower of every trend that is happening in the party, and from my understanding of running a, party, a political party, I will appeal to those who are presently complaining to allow the leaders of the party to come in and manage this decision that had been taken. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Logmadia. Sometime last year, Governor Wike was quoted as saying that he could never leave PDP because PDP has malaria, but APC has cancer. Do you think he's going to hold true to those words? And PDP is now the one looking cancerous, isn't it, with this kind of discord within the ranks? How does PDP approach 
Let me finish my question, please. How does PDP approach these kinds of issues? Will you be using more of the carrot approach or the stick approach? Will you be emphasizing party discipline or trying to cajole people and make conciliatory offers? Well, well, well to, be, to be honest with you, you got no wiki that I know and that I work with at some levels. Is a very, very, very passionate leader and a member of the People's Democratic Party. When it comes to the issue of the PDP, I remember one encounter, and I always tell people about this. The day that His Excellency, the former Speaker of the House of Rep, Honorable Budugara, left the PDP. I remember we were in Parana Court. And I can clearly say that Governor Wiki almost suffered a heart attack. And that is love. That is passion for your political party. So people who are saying, oh, Governor Wiki will leave the party. They do not have another, I do not believe they have an understanding of the personality and the personality of who Governor Wiki is. Governor Wiki declared on the convention ground that notwithstanding whoever emerges from this process, he remains, that he will remain a party man and he will support the decision of the party. But you cannot say a man who say I have complained, you say he should not complain. It's within his rights. If he believes, like a lover of the party, like a pillar, one of the pillars of the party that he is, if he believes that things have not been done well in an era, let us leave out the fact that he was the, is the one involved. Let us say that, oh, okay, let us go and do what has not been done right. Let's go and do it right. And for those of us who are on Twitter, we witnessed yesterday that the candidate himself said he listens to complain of the party members. He will listen and he will continue to listen and that the party will remain as one united and indivisible political party. So that's why I said from the beginning that what we are encountering now are just turbulences. But I believe and I strongly believe too that the managers of the process the drivers, the captain, they have the capacity to manage the situation of where we are. So I do not believe, I'm not one of those who will come on air and say that oh, Governor Wiki will leave the party. I am confident, going by what I know of him, going by the passion that I see in him, going by his contribution to the development of the People's Democratic Party, he will not build a house and watch his collapse. That's my take on that. A lot of people, some people are saying, why is he doing this? Why is he getting so upset that there are other people uh, that have become, you know, second place in primary elections in the past, but they still supported the party? They've mentioned Kwan Kaso in 2015, still delivering votes. You know, they've mentioned other politicians. Even Atiku Abubakar deciding to still, you know, work with whoever he's lost to. Now, why is Governor Wiki doing all of this? Why? That's what some of them are saying. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Rufai, thank you very much. I will not speak to the why, because we are human beings, and we have the capacity to manage issues differently. So we should not talk to the why. We should speak to how do we manage this process. And like I, and like I said, I have been in discussion with many of our leaders, because even Governor Wiki himself said this, and I want to quote him. It would be a shame for PDP not to be able to rescue our nation and work towards and work towards its rebuilding. And it will be very, very, very disappointing to Nigerians out there who have suffered untold hardships, whose lives have been taken from the top to the bottom in the last seven years. So we do not have a choice in the People's Democratic Party. And that is why we will continue to appeal to one another. We will continue to be conciliatory in our approaches in ensuring that we remain steady with our eyes on the ball and focus and work towards ensuring that come 2023, May 29, our candidate, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, and the vice, vice presidential candidate, Otto Ifani Okowa, are sworn in as Mr. President and the Vice President, in order to be able to reset this country in order to be able to unify a strongly divided nation in order to emancipate 
our people from the untold hardships which the seven years of the All Progressive Congress have pushed all of us into. Well, uh, <clears throat> there's another matter beyond Wiki. A group called the PDP Concerned League. They gave uh, uh, Dr. Yochi Ayu a 19 day ultimatum in the first week of June for him to resign his position. They accuse him of mismanaging the primaries, uh, but even beyond that, they're saying that when he emerged as the chairman of the party, he promised that if the uh, candidate of the party at the presidential level comes from the north, then he will step down to allow for proper representation uh, within the uh, party. But since the uh, conclusion of the uh, presidential primary, uh, the party chairman has refused to keep to his word. What exactly is the truth? Are these uh, concerned stakeholders who are asking for resignation and fulfillment of uh, promise, agreement, whatever Labour will give it? Are they being ignored? Thank you very much, Dr. Abati. Dr. Abati. You have been in the system, and you understand how things work in political parties. There are tendencies. Just like there's a tendency now, as calling for the resignation of um, 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 uh, Senator Yocha Ayu, there will also be other tendencies that will demand that, no, 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 let him stay. But you know, Senator Ayu, as you speak, is not in the country, by my own understanding or from what I've heard from the party he traveled. So I think that those making this demand will be patient enough to allow Senator Yoche Ayu to return to the country. And these issues, you see, you see, Dr. Abati, the way I understand the People's Democratic Party, in terms, in terms of structure, the founders of this party created various levels of platform of decision making. If what those who are writing this, are saying is true, I am confident because the New Democratic Party is a very, very, very democratic political, political party. They will take it through the channels, through the National Working Committee, through the, the BOT. We even have other channels like Governors Forum. They will discuss all these issues. And at the end of it, they will come to a conclusion that will be generally acceptable to majority members of the party that if we don't go in this direction, this is the consequence. So my own is to appeal, whatever the situation is, let Senator Yoche Ayu return and come and, and this, can be ten, this can be taken before him. Well, the emergence of Yoche Ayu as PDP's chairman seemed to signal that PDP would go in the direction of the South for a presidential candidate. It seems like a lifetime ago now. PDP did not do that. You went up north for your presidential candidate. And there seemed to be some grievances about that decision from somebody like former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshe, who tweeted about it and saying, our South look on, meaning it's us, the South, it's our turn. What exactly do you plan to do about that branch of you know, disgruntled party members? Is he speaking for a block or is he speaking for himself? Well, 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 I've been in conversation with uh, Oshokomole, uh, the governor, the former governor of Ekiti State, uh, Governor Ayo Fayoshi, since uh, that tweet. As a matter of fact, he copied me the tweet. And we had our discussions, and I expressed my own opinion. I would not want to bring to the front burner issues that I believe the party had taken decisions upon. And somehow, whether rightly or wrongly, the party is moving on. I say this because I am aware, and well, you can see that I'm supposed to be in the position to be aware, that in the foremost, the party constituted a committee, which was in the manner of the Ike Kurimadu Committee of 2015. In 2019, this com that committee was chaired by Governor Bala Mohammed, and I remember that we discussed this issue on this very platform. <clears throat> what, was the, what, what did they went for? They were supposed to go and search, to go and ask, why did we lose the 2019 election? Even though in the party, we believed that we won that election, and it, we, were, we were untwisted, and another result was declared. However, 
go out there and find out what happened. And the committee came back with a report on why we lost. And also proceeded further to say that ahead of the 2023 election, they come, the party should look in the direction of the northeast and the northwest. Sorry, the northeast and the southeast for their presidential candidate. Even though somebody like me, who is from the North Central, believed that the report of the committee was unfavorable because the North Central too has not been able to be president since 1999 to date. However, they also provided a caveat in their report saying that in case the party does not want to go by the way of zoning and it chooses to go by the way of merit, then it should declare the contest open in order to, support, in order to elect whoever the party consider as meritorious. <clears throat> this report was brought to the party, but decision was not taken on it. However, when the IU uh, 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 NWC emerged, ahead of the 2023 election, it's, it set up another committee, now chaired by Governor Samuel Otom, that it should go and come back and advise the party on how to go on zoning about ahead of 2023. The membership of this committee on the ratio of 1 to 37, because we had 36 states and FCT, and every state nominated a representative into the committee. Aside one nominee that didn't vote on the report and refused to, uh, sorry, that didn't sign on the report and until the report was submitted, they refused to sign. 36 members out of 37 signed the report approving that ahead of the 2023, the candidature of the party should be made open. If you set up a committee of 37 persons on equal basis of one per state, and they return a report to the party, and say rather than going by zoning, make it open, let everybody come and contest. And the report, and this report has superseded the report of the Mohammed Balas, uh, Bala Mohammed's committee, which says that zone to the northeast or the southeast. And at the end of the day, the party's decision, which is supreme, prevailed that it should be declared open. And we all went to the national convention, even though some of us didn't have votes. But those who have votes as delegates went into the national convention and elected a candidate. I think that decision is in line with the wishes of the party. And it is supposed to be supreme. And I will gladly say, without being rude to the person of Governor uh, Fayoshi, that even he and the delegates from Ekiti participated in that process. So the issue of South Lokon, to me, doesn't no longer, no longer stand, because even the South participated in that process. And the candidate has emerged. What is important, like, as part of a decision that was taken at that last neck, where the report of the committee was approved, it was decided that hereafter, if the party wishes to go back to zoning and to go to a particular area or to go to a particular geopolitical zone, because the party works by geopolitical zones, it can return to it. But as we speak, we'll go to convention and elect a candidate. I think that was the decision of the party. Okay. I'd quickly like to know what happened in the Kitty State. Why is it that Elijah Tika Obaka didn't come out to campaign? Was there a fight on ground, you know, with a fire she or the lights? There's also a talk by some sources about the fact that they wanted Chegwoni and now your fire she's candidate emerged and there were some discrepancies. So what really happened on ground in the Kitty State? Well, well um, Rufai, what I do know is that at every point in the party, that, like I said earlier, there are always tendencies. But once the candidate emerges, and once a decision is taken, 
People are expected, every member is expected to follow in that path. I still believe, and this is personal to me, that moving ahead, that we really, as a party, need to look into what happened in AKT. Why, for instance, the national body of the party did not go to campaign, even if it is one day rally, why they didn't go? And why people didn't attend? I don't have the facts before me, Rufai, as you speak. But I believe that in order to correct ourselves as members of the PDP, this is one issue. That those who would discuss the management of the process in the party as we speak and as we move further must look into. Well, uh, your, the party's uh, presidential uh, standard bearer, Alaja Chiku Abubakar, says, well, his plan is to unify Nigeria, but he will start with the party, with the community, and then the society. Uh, if we were to make recommendations to him, what would be your specific recommendations, particularly in the light of the emergent issues within the party? How should he go about it? Oh, oh no, 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 no. I, I have direct access to uh, the candidate of the party, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, and I have access to Governor Wiki. I have, and this is not being boastful. I spoke to uh, Governor Sam or Tom last night. I spoke to Philip Aduda last night. And I've been talking around on the need for unity. What's important to us, as we speak, it's not as if the party is as divided as it's being painted by the people who cannot even, uh, who cannot even do the simplest task of uh, providing a running mate. And all you have in INEC today is a placeholder. They are the ones who are now dipping noses and putting hands and making declarations that if I want to... That was not my question. That's I it. want to assure... That was not my question. Yeah, I will go there. I will go there, Dr. Abati. I'm, Dr. Abati, Dr. Abati, I'm laying the foundation for you. <laughs> Let me lay the foundation for you, Dr. Abati. Okay. I, say, I say people who have placeholders in INEC who cannot complete the simplest task of nominating a running mate are uh, poking noses into a candidate and the party that has taken a decision, rightly or wrongly, because, uh, Dr. Abati, before I go to your question, the simplest task on this journey for a man who has a life ambition to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is to say, in this my life ambition, I am going with Mr. A or Mrs. B is the one that I'm going with. But we have been waiting now. The nation is waiting. Their party members are waiting. Weeks after weeks, they say they are going for pooling. They want to go and do pool to decide on image in a life ambition process. However, I leave, that, I leave that aside. So for me, and in respect of what our candidate, the unifier, the one who understands the nuances of our nation, the only candidate that can be elected that will guarantee the unity of our nation, the one who has no sides, because part of the challenges we are facing in the country today is because President Muhammadu Buhari demonstrated, I mean, ability to be on his side. But this candidate that the PDP has brought has no sides. He's a Nigerian, and he has demonstrated it. Whether in his business, whether in his lifestyle, in whatever way you look at it, Atiku is the unifier. Having said that, we will continue to work on the rough edges that I imagine. And I can assure you, and true, you assure Nigerians that the PDP will run, into the, will run the election as one united political party. And I want to, before you, allow, before, you, before you release me, I want to use the opportunity, this opportunity to congratulate Nigerians out there that the APC that has become a burden onto them, that, have take, that has taken their lives from the top to the bottom, is going to face extinction. And it's just a matter of time. Well, thank you very much, Kola uh, Logudinho. Good to see you back in action. Thank you thank very you. much indeed.